Hey, how you doing, man? What up, man? I'm sitting up here. I gotta put my glasses on so I can see. What's all happening, right. Taib? I'm doing all right. Hey, by the way, this is Taib from House of Kicks and my man, Chris. Chris Art, that's USA.com. Back for another House of Kicks interview. Go ahead, bro. All right. <laughs> all right, man. Listen, man. So I walked into the mall the other day, all right? And I see a bunch of, like, young dudes. Them guys is dressed the same way, same shoes, same style. And I'm yeah. sitting there like, man, well, you know, what, what's going on, man? What's going on with the shoe game? So, and that led me to think about, you know, a lot of things that you and I talked about the other day, and it's the lack of uniqueness. You know, like, there's not a lot of people trying to be themselves. They all want to be like somebody else. So what what is going on and what do you think is going to happen if this keeps going on, man? What do you think is going to happen to the sneaker game? Uh, man, um, you're talking about, you know what? It's, it's a shelf space thing, right? In order for um, everybody shops at Foot Locker and Finish Line, the big chains. In order for uh, dudes to wear something different, the big chain has to have a variety on the wall. But when you go into a big chain, all you see is Nike and Adidas. All right, before you say that, let me let me cut you off real quick. What's your favorite brand? Oh man, uh, my brand Art. <laughs> but uh. <laughs> But so you wear I'm your own real, shoes. I'm real. You tell Seriously. Me, do you wear your own shoes? I wear my own shoes most of the time, man, unless I'm wearing like Cole Hines or something dressy like an Allen Edmonds. But if you ask me, all right, now I do have still have some Nikes and stuff, man, because I just have had a bunch of Nikes, have a bunch of them. But I gave most of them to my son so he could kick him and wear them because I have a had a nice collection. So I gave it to him. But my shoe that Favorite shoe all time was the Patrick Ewan Adidas. Not the Patrick Ewan shoe that he owns, that is the blue, orange, and white Patrick Ewan Adidas. Used to have the chevrons on it with the ball with Ewing going across the top, the logo on it. I mean, I wore those forever. I love those shoes. My that, second favorite shoe. You're a Knicks fan, right? Are you a Knicks fan? Yeah, I'm a Knicks fan, though. So, I mean, that's. You know, I live in Memphis. I love the Grizzlies, but I'm a Knicks fan, and I've been suffering for 10, 15 years. So I, I should be able to have two teams because the Knicks suck. But <laughs> Grizzlies don't suck. So I went to watch Kobe against the Grizzlies the other night. That was great, man. That would that's probably if if you don't do anything this year, man, make sure you see a a, a Kobe game before he retires. That was dope. But favorite shoe was that you and Adidas. My second favorite shoe was the uh, brown and purple Air Moab, the Nike Air Moab, which that shoe, man, I wore it when I was uh, over in Singapore. And I got pictures of me, like, kicking it over in Singapore with, with those Air Moabs on, man, and I killed those shoes. But that was when they first came out. That's, like, my second favorite shoe. And then the Ewan is my favorite shoe. Even though my high school colors were green and white, when I played ball, I wore orange, blue, and white shoes. <laughs> man, but that's because you're a Knicks fan. Y'all do the same thing everywhere you go, man. <laughs> Doesn't matter where you are. You're a Knicks fan. You're a Knicks fan. You got heart. You got to roll with the team, even when they suck. I, I, I understand that. What's your favorite shoe brand, though? What's yours? Man, listen, man. I grew up in, in, in Africa. I, I grew up in Togo. That's where I'm from. Okay. Back then, we didn't have money to buy brand new shoes, so all we bought was used shoes. And I remember... One of my friends had those uh, infrared sixes, the black one, and I couldn't get them things. So the next thing that I saw was a Reebok pump with a pump on this on the on the side on the hill where you had to yeah. pump it up. I wanted those shoes yeah. so bad that my dad told me, "If you get good grades, you're gonna get them." But he never bought them for me. So when I grew up and I had money to get my own shoes, the first thing I wanted to get was just any Jordan. So Jordans were like one of my favorite shoes, but then I got the Nike 2K4 Warachis. Yeah. Black and gray one. Man, I wore those shoes 
365 days. I mean, that's all I was wearing every day, man. And if you wear, man, you're not going to switch your shoes. I said, I don't give a damn. I like these shoes. So yeah. those were my favorite shoes. To this day, I just can't find them anymore. I mean, they dropped back. They came back out again, but they're like 150 I ain't got that kind of money right now. So yeah. <laughs> sale, you, money. you just don't want to spend it on that. Nah. They didn't come that much. I think they, they was, what, 100 when they first came out, right? 129 I 129. think it's 129 Yeah. Yes. Yep. Those, but now, though, man, it's funny because I don't have my shoes on me, but I wear the Columbia's. You know, that's like white folks' shoes. I mean, I'm not trying to yeah. be racist. I'm just saying. Like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> right, I right. Know, <laughs> I wear those the like, hiking, yeah, hiking man. Shoes. I know what you're talking about, the hiking shoes. Columbia's, they're like brown, and I pay twenty nine ninety nine for them things, man. I wear them every day, man. Oh man, yeah, you. I can't. Hey, I'm a, I'm a style beast, man. I mean, as much as I talk about somebody else not wearing other brands, uh, man, I have to. When I'm not wearing my art T-shirt and stuff like that, man, I, I have labels on, man, and I'm okay with that. I just like, I like fashion. I mean, you can't tell by the videos because I'm always wearing this. That's because I'm usually packing shoes when we do the videos. Right. But you know, I like, I like shoes, man. And as far as um. Tennis shoes, though, man, that Adidas is my favorite thing. I love it, you know, but like you said, though, I, I, the problem, the problem, when you go to the mall, I mean, even if we standing on line, if I go and I'm hanging out with somebody, and if you're going and you're standing on line with somebody, or if you're sitting in a car and you're watching the line, in my case, which is what happens all the time, everybody's wearing Nike, you know, and you said it, it's a problem. I agree. I agree 100%. I think it's a big issue. I mean, Nike makes dope shoes. There's nothing, you know, that anybody else can say about that. Right. But now, let me ask you a question. You know, sometimes when we talk and you say something like Nike make dope shoes, what does yeah. it mean to dope? What, is, what does that mean? What is the term? What What's the meaning of the term dope? Well, you know, for me... Some people may not understand that. I'm just saying, you never know who's watching. So what is I want to put it in my own terms. Obviously, you know, when you were a hip hop kid, you grew up in the 80s and 90s and stuff like that. You use slang and you use terms. So dope is fresh, cool. But for me, dope is when something is individually expressed and it looks cool, it could be something ugly, right? But if that person is standing out, and they don't look like everybody else. To me, that's dope. You know, cause Even where, you're not you're not conforming. Man, hold on a yeah. second. So you you see Russell Westbrook, right? Russell Westbrook's dope. Hey, people say he looks, you know, corny. Man. <laughs> I think All Russell right. Westbrook is dope, man. All right. So he's standing out. So in your in your definition, as long as you're standing out, that's dope. That's dope. You know, obviously he can't do much outside of Jordan because he's a Jordan brand athlete. Right. But man, I, I admire a dude that goes out of his way not to look like you. You know what I'm saying? And when we were growing up, I know you the same way. When, when, when we were growing up, you could go in your closet and you could pull out a pair of Brooks, Saucony, Kangaroos, Deodoras, Elise. You know, uh, Etonics, the, the choice was so crazy. Nobody had to look like anybody else. And if you had something different, all right, I got a book back here. Let me see. I'm going to get up, man. It's going to be squeaky. Let me see if That's I got right. stuff over here still. Uh, I wish I could find it. I can't find it anyway, right? This magazine right here, right? Bounce, uh, yeah. Sean Couch. Sean Couch and Bobito Garcia were doing a whole lot of stuff, right? And when I first started my my first shoe company, Show Shot, you know, this would have like sneakers in here and stuff. But you know how kids are running around like, what are those? That almost feels to me, man, like Nike put those kids up to that. Because back in the day, we would say, what are those because we didn't know what they wore and it was fresh you know and i look up to like bobito garcia in the shoe game he's like the sneaker 
uh, like the sneaker crown prince, as far as I'm concerned, by Beto Garcia. He wrote the book. Um, you know, he, he wrote the book on sneaker culture. So what he's talking about in that book is he's saying, hey, this kid would have on a pair of Pumas. He had the fat laces in them. This other kid might have on a pair of Adidas. He had a fat laces in them. You know, at the beginning of hip hop, hip hop culture built a sneaker game and you had all these different styles. So if you were poor and you only had one pair of shoes, then you would you would have 16 pair of shoelaces. Right. And you put a different color shoelace in and match the outfit. And that was dope. You know, so being fresh and being dope. I heard uh, Dame Dash, right? You know, he's calls, he calls himself Young Fresh to Death um, back in the day. And when he bought Pro Kids, he was talking about the idea of wearing a pair and then never wearing them again. You know, that's cool and all of that. But what I admired about what he was talking about is how individual his style was. Kids are not individuals now. People are not individuals. Even dudes my age, I see a, a dude my age and he's rocking you know, a pair of Jordans and he almost looks corny. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, come on, man. You you standing on line with the kids? You know, come on, what you doing? What I'm trying to explain too. <laughs> but I mean, obviously, obviously it's more, it affects me more than it affects anybody else. And yeah, I got a problem because I got my own shoe cup. But you know what the problem is? The other thing is, because of it, Nike has monopoly. So now all the other brands are dying out. That's one yeah. of the biggest problems. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. That that's a huge problem, man. And let me um, I gotta pull this thing up on um on my website. I started doing this thing called Dope Stuff I Like. Dope S H I T. I didn't want to curse, but I got this thing called Dope Stuff I Like, right? And I introduced these shoe brands. And the reason I started doing you know, the shoe brand stuff is because I felt like there's some good brands out there, man. People are overlooking these good brands and they're not feeling them. And I don't think it's it's fair. You can wear whatever you like. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, if you think Nike is dope, that's good. You know what? Rock it. It's good. You know, but to look at other brands like you know what are those and all of that kind of ignorant stuff man is it's corny to me because your flavor is your flavor your mom may not be able to afford something like a pair of jordans but you think it's dope because you got them and some other kid may be rocking a pair of reeboks or something and you clowning the kid you know individual style and individuality is what creates billionaires you know what I'm saying? I agree with you, man. So that leads us to the next thing. So because of the problem, now let's let's explain what shoe functions. When I say shoe functions, what does that mean to the guy that's listening? I explain to the audience, shoe functions. So how does that tie into the, the topic today? Jordans were originally worn for hooping. All right, it's the first shoe that made the transition from um, sport to daily wear, right? Now, prior to that, the mm -hmm. Puma Clyde, the Puma Clyde actually was the first. I'm wrong. Don't let me front and, and say that. The Puma Clyde was the first shoe that transitioned from the court to uh, street wear, right? Before that, shoes served a purpose. You wore casual shoes or dress shoes because you dressed up. You wore a running shoe and you have different forms of running shoes. You have stability shoes, which are for like heavier people or people that may have feet, you know, foot problems and they need a shoe that's more sturdy. You have neutral shoes, which is for uh, people that don't need a whole lot of cushion or a whole lot of technical aspects to their shoe for running. You know, so you have these different forms of shoes for running. Uh, basketball, you have people that like high cut shoes, you have people that like low cut shoes, and then you have inserts that give you uh, people that have flat feet or a higher arch. Basketball shoes are performance shoes. You wear them because you play the sport. It's like Under Armour. Under Armour makes a shoe for basketball. Does it have a lot of style off the court? No, nah, it, it doesn't look like a Jordan off the court. But if you remember, like I remember back in the day, a Jordan wasn't a Jordan off the court. 
you just knew Jordan was the man. So dudes were rocking Jordans because Jordan, he was the man. Well, the same thing is like a basketball shoe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, the shoe is a basketball shoe. Just like Steph Curry, his shoe is a, it's a basketball shoe. That's what it's for. So you have shoe function, and the shoe has to function or you don't wear it. So it used to be that people wore shoes for comfort. And then when the Puma Clyde came out, people started wearing it as a fashion statement more. So sneakers started to transition. So that's when you ask the question function, function means that the shoe has to perform a certain way for the job that it was created to you know, perform for. People don't look at shoes that way anymore. So you Some think, shoes, so let, let me cut you off. So you, should, you think if people start look, uh, to look at shoes in that, in that way, that's going to change? You think that could be a, a solution to the problem? The, um, yeah, yeah, I actually do, man. I do. I really do. Because you have an industry now called casual athletic shoes, right? Yeah. Um, there's a company, Clay. You ever heard of Clay? Never. C-L-A-E. Clay makes some of the cleanest, dopest shoes you will see. Their whole purpose in creating a shoe is to create a shoe that you can wear to work and in a casual way. So it's now called the casual athletic market, right? So you got Clay in that space. Uh, Gourmet is kind of in that space, but not quite. A uh, greats brand is kind of in that that space. Uh, White mountaineering, I know you probably never heard of that. White mountaineering, um, common projects. You heard of common projects? Man, you. you know what I'm you put a right now, man. You're exposing me right now, man. <laughs> Very surplus. I'm gonna keep going down the line of these shoes because there's some dope shoes out there. You know, generic. I got them all on my website, man. I mean. And, you know, when you sit there and you start looking through it, I can give you some more because it's important that I keep giving you these different styles and stuff like that. You know, but it, it's um common projects. Um, man, there's a lot of different stuff, man, that you can just kind of roll with. And you got all of these great kind of brands that are out there. I'm going to give you a few more before I get back to what I'm saying. So give me one second and I'm gonna scroll down. White Mountaineering, uh, Black Spot, Unswisher, Common Projects, Generic Surplus, OHW, Color Q, um, what's, the, what's the brand, Fill in Pieces. You got all of these different brands, right? You are in the sneaker biz, but you haven't ever heard of these brands. My brand, Art. You haven't heard of it. Nobody's heard of these brands. We can't get shelf space. We could never get inside of a Foot Locker. Now, we might end up in some smaller stores uh, where we get a relationship going with somebody. But if people were buying shoes for function, like if you're buying to be casual, you got all of these great brands out here that nobody's rocking because kids are too afraid of somebody saying, what are those? You know, and that's stupid. Because you're missing out on some great flavor, you know, and you could be an individual, you could stand out and have on something dope. And these shoes aren't cheap. You see what I'm saying? Uh, mm -hmm. Common projects, man, common projects, sneakers from common projects cost around $300. It's like um, general, uh, general surplus, same thing. You can find $150 shoes, they're not cheap shoes. So people will be like, what are those? And you'd be like, yo, these cost $500. It's like somebody wearing a pair of Hinder Schemes, right? Yeah. And somebody saying, yo, Hinder Scheme, or well, they looking at like, a fake Jordan. Can you, can you tell people what Hinder Scheme is doing so they understand? Uh, Hinder Scheme is taking retro shoes, retro Jordans, right? And then they're recreating them in a high-end fashion. Now, I have a, a, a person that I talk to a lot on Facebook. And um, his name's Sean. He owns Lasco, L-A-S-C-O, Los Angeles Shoe Company, right? Yep. And Lasco just made the uh, Veg Octobers. They only made a handful of them. The shoe costs like $1,200. they are taking these premium materials, and they're recreating um, retro designs. So, like, Hinder Scheme and Lasco are in the same space. 
the shoes are expensive. I'm not even going to sit up here in front like they're not expensive. But a kid who sees that shoe wouldn't even have any appreciation for the shoe because they don't even know what they are. Unless they follow certain websites, they might know what Hinder Scheme is, but they don't know what Lasco is. They don't know what Clay is. They don't know that this stuff is still dope. And the ultimate problem that occurs, we talked about this before, is if you're a kid and you're rocking Jordans every day, there's going to come a point in time where you're going to want to do your own thing and you might want to start your own shoe company. And, you know, you cut off any potential for you ever being able to start your own shoe company because you're such a, a, a dick rider for Nike. You know, and that's dangerous, man, because it really does create a monopoly. So the good thing is Under Armour is great for the industry. You know what I'm saying? I'm glad they're coming up because I've seen a lot of kids, like, playing with Steph Curry shoes. But the bad thing is now the same thing's going to happen with, with Under Armour because people are going to start wearing those and it's going to transition into, like, oh, this is now what you wear because if you don't wear this, you're not cool. And the same problem is going to repeat itself with this, this new brand. So no, well, how, do, how do we find solutions to kind of create that diversity, you know, where people have their own style? What do you do? Like, what are some of the ways you can teach these young kids, you know, what to do? And uh, how do they spend their money? Like, what, you know, what can kind of create that little bing, you know, where they, they, they want to make changes? Um, you know what? Uh, I think Under Armour can change everything. You think so? so? Yeah, I don't think the same way you do in, in regard to Under Armour. Um, Under Armour is opening the door up for other brands. That means that you can wear a pair of Under Armours now and you don't look corny because Steph Curry's killing it, right? Right. Well, that creates more opportunities in the space because what it does is it opens up shelf space in a store. So now a Foot Locker has to start giving chefs, you know, Steph Curry some space inside of the Foot Locker. That means there's another, you know, strip. If you go into a Foot Locker, shoes are aligned according to brand. Nike controls a whole wall. The opposite side of the store, you're going to see Adidas, New Balance, uh, Under Armour, or whatever else is over there. But what you're going to start noticing now because of what Under Armour is doing, and nobody's really paying attention to it, ASICs has been around forever. And because um, of the collabs that ASICs are doing, they're getting a higher profile on these sneaker sites and stuff. But if you go into a Foot Locker now, you can actually see ASICs on the wall. Yeah. You didn't see that last year. You didn't see it the year before. But you're starting to see ASICs on the wall at Hibbit Sports, at Foot Locker, at, um, you know, different places. But you, you, they are going on discount and stuff because they're not selling as fast. But you're starting to see a whole wall of New Balance, a whole wall of ASICs. Uh, a whole section, not a wall, a whole section. And if ASICS begins to perform even slightly, even a little bit, that's going to open the door for a company like Clay. Because like I said, man, Clay quite possibly makes some of the dopest shoes on the market right now, period. And people can argue with me all day and say whatever they want to say, man. But if you go and look at the shoes, you will have to admit that if you're a dude that's going from his 20s to his 30s and wearing Jordans is not quite going to be your thing anymore, Clay is the shoe company that you really start looking at because now you can have that New Balance kind of flavor or that um, Asics kind of flavor, but you can actually put those things on and go to work in them and get away with wearing a running shoe at your job. Oh, yeah. And I mean, and Clay's done a good job of creating that, man. I mean, I even attempted to do that with the last shoe I made, which looks kind of like a New Balance 574 or, you know, Clay has a shoe like that. Greats has a shoe like that. Everybody's got a shoe like that that you can wear with a pair of joggers that looks kind of fresh, you know. And that that's, I think Under Armour is good for the market. But what's going to have to happen, which I don't think will happen with kids and younger guys, is that older guys like us guys that are 30s and you know getting up there and older you know 40s we need to start setting the styles for everybody else we need to become there needs to be a blog 
Well, right the, pro the problem is you have, you have places like Complex and Kicks on Fire, all these other places, and all they want to do constantly are snigger news. Most of the time, they want to show Jordans and all that. You know, so right. all the keys, that's all they want to do, man. And they have, like, this stupid list that they come up with, like, 10 of the best shoes in the world, and they put right. in those Jordans. You know, that's the problem, man. Yeah, but you know what? The problem is nobody else is filling the void for the market that's after that. The consumers, the market, corporate America, goes for who? They go for the teenagers. The teenagers have disposable income, and their parents buy stuff for them. So everything is marketed for younger people. So 14 to 21 years old, that's what everything is created for. That's why the music sucks. That's why the, the sneakers game is whack. And I mean, I hate to say that because it sounds like I'm dissing young people and I'm not. It's that young people don't think for themselves. You know, they don't think for themselves, man. They have to fit in because if they don't fit in, then they get bullied, they get mistreated, all that kind of stuff. What somebody has to do is create a complex styled layout. Now, I mean, if you did it, or if somebody listening to this is like, yo, that's a good idea. Somebody needs to create a complex style layout for dudes that are 26 to 46 years old. That means they need to start showing guys that are now getting their first jobs, getting their first career jobs, or starting businesses. They need to show how fresh some of these guys dress. You know what I'm saying? I agree. And, by, and then you start, you know, music like uh, Foreign Exchange. You start writing articles about that kind of stuff. That's why I started the Dope Stuff I Like section on my page, because I got, like, art on there. I love art, but I got, like, uh, M. Brian Bowen who does the, you know, artwork for like a uh, kicks guide or a complex. He does artwork, you know, of basketball players and athletes. I got like, you know, Justin uh, Boa on that page. So people can know who those people are because our generation, we got pocket money and we don't want to look like a 19 year old. And we want to look good enough to get a date or you know, get somebody and go out on date night with our wives or something. We want to be dope and we want to be fresh too, but there's nobody catering to that market. And if somebody did, it'll trickle down possibly. Maybe right. young kids be like, yo, man, look at this old dude, he's fresh. Because I get it like when I go to a store or something and I'm going to buy a bunch of stuff, I'll have on like some penguin pants or a penguin shirt and some Cole Huns. And these little kids look at me like I'm a rock star walking in because they're not seeing even their dads not dressing like that. And they're like, yo, look at the old dude, fresh. You know, he's fresh. I got on a pair of Stan socks and a pair of cold hunts. Or I got on my running shoes. And I guarantee you, when you walk in the bank, when you walk in the bank looking like that, you're not going to get profiled that much. I'm not saying that you shouldn't wear Jordans, because you, but I'm saying that, that kind of shows that you're mature, that yeah. you're not just doing on the street trying to do something stupid. You know what I mean? And that's yeah. something that you need to understand, too. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with that 100%. And, and unfortunately, I don't think that stops you from getting profiled. Of course, we know that. And we don't want to get into the political side of it. That's not what we do. But, you know, when you look good, you feel good. It's the truth. You know, when I was coaching, I made sure my team had the matching shoes. You know, even if we didn't have a whole lot of money, I made sure the team looked good because if you look good, you play good. Man, you know, I don't say that to some dudes in my in my neighborhood, man. You see these kids with all these shoes, but they can't ball for Jack. <laughs> 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 okay, hey, I had a dude. I had a dude. Ball, man. <laughs> hey, I had a cat, man. He was six foot four, and <laughs> uh, dude looked like a baller. Man, that cat couldn't catch to save his life, man. Ball hit his hand, pancake hand. <laughs> he got, you know, got butterfingers, man. <laughs> hey, but he looked like a ball player. So I was like, hey, he's going to make the team because he's going to scare people when we walk in the gym. <laughs> you know, so it is what it is. But uh, solutions. I mean, do you have any solution ideas? That's my solution. I think somebody needs to create a complex style thing, man, where you hook up with dudes, maybe. You find one dude in every state, right? And that dude goes out and he captures uh, candid pictures of daily style 
of our generation of guys and their fashion choices. You know what I'm saying? And then you put it out and you create that website, man. And you know who does that? There's a website called Uncrate. And then, you know, Hi, uh, Snobiety used to do it, but they, they are getting off into something and it's getting whack. I don't even go to the website hardly anymore, mm -hmm. you know, but because they're overdoing it, you know, but I think there's a space out there for that 26 to 46 year old area. And there's a sneaker market. Obviously, there's a sneaker market because you got clay, you got OHW, you know, you got generic surplus, you got common projects. You got Cola Q, you got Fill in Pieces. All of these places, these companies are showing up. As a matter of fact, Fill in Pieces, if you go onto um, uh, eBay and you type in Fill in Pieces, man, you'll see some Fill in Pieces shoes uh, reselling for like three, four hundred dollars. Well, that's crazy. Yeah, you know, wow. so the market is there. People are looking, Damn. man. It's there, you know, but that's it. That's the solution, man. It can't be based around young dudes. And teenagers setting the trends, or rappers, because rappers are corny now too, almost. You know? <laughs> you know, it's, gotta, it's gotta start with dudes like us when we get fresh and we go out. Maybe instead of us feeling like we're clowning, we're, we look like clowns by taking pictures of what we're wearing. Maybe we start taking pictures of what we're wearing and putting it on the blog, so a young cat can be like, "Yo, I want to get fresh like that dude," you know, and that'll change some stuff. Maybe. I agree. I agree, man. Yeah. yeah, but you know, now we need to let our audience know. So, what are we going to do next? I'm thinking, man, you know what? A lot of people want to talk about fake sneakers, man. That's that's all they want to talk about fake shoes, fake shoes, fake shoes. So, you know what? I think it's a time that you and I kind of go into the, a little deep. So, I can show you some stuff, you know. So, I will share my screen with you so we can yeah. let our audience know about it, you know, because I feel like I don't want to be putting our videos on, on fake shoes every time because it takes a lot of time, man. I just want to yeah. use one of them and just break it down to people so they understand yeah. when you buy something online, this is what you do and this is what you don't do. And this I is what one, you I did I did one fake fake shoe video, man, and I agree. And I kept those fake shoes just because I figured you might want to do something like that. And I agree. I think the next move, I think, you know what, we'll do the fake shoe joint. You see these in my hand right now, man? Here for words. Those are oh, fake, God. man. See that? That's the Fear Pack 4, the grade school size. Wow. Man, dude even put it in, like, see, if you see here, he put the B stamp on it, trying to throw me off. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, you know, there are certain things, you know, we're going to talk about that next time, so. Man, I'm, that's I'm, real. Yeah, so we're going to talk about that. It's a good way, good conversation, man. I'm, I'm glad we got it. Thanks know. for your time, man. I appreciate it. That's it, man. I appreciate you guys. Peace.